Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. We're gonna do something a little bit different moving on. A lot of times when I do short little rehousings, I kind of string them together and put two or three of them in a video. Unfortunately, I've realized it can be difficult for people to find the information that they're looking for when they're searching for a particular species. I found that it's difficult myself because sometimes I'll go back to try to find a husbandry video I did on something only to find out that it wasn't the featured species in that little husbandry video I put together. So obviously the whole point of Tom's Big Spiders is to make sure things are easy to find for people that are looking for information. So what we're going to do here is a series of little short ones, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so of some of the rehousings I've done recently along with some of the care notes. We're going to kick it off with Ceratogyrus marshalli or the straight horn baboon. Somebody keeps coming on in just about every video I post and asking for one of these. And the thing is, just a heads up, I don't like doing husbandry videos on things I haven't kept for a little while. Anyone can take a spider, drop it in a little vial of dirt and say this is how you keep it. I like to let some time pass so we can see if my husbandry is on, if the spider is growing and putting on size and doing well and healthy. So I usually wait several months before doing a husbandry video on something. I may do a housing and show how I set it up, but I'm not speaking with any type of authority if I haven't kept the thing for a little while. So in the case of the C. Marshalli, it's been a year, time to kind of do an update on it, see how it's doing. And then obviously what we will do is when it becomes an adult, I will do a full blown husbandry video on the adult. So enough of me talking, let's check out my C. Marshalli. All right, so I've had a lot of people, somebody in particular, somebody's been asking me about this, like every video they post up do C. Marshalli. So we have C. Marshalli, the horned baboon, or straight horned baboon, if you what it was. Picked this one up, oh God, about a year ago or so, a buddy of mine gave it to me as a gift and it was originally in this container and it was a little teeny dude before and you can see if you look here you can see all the tunnels it did so not something i would normally use as a sling container just because i've, I've never had these before I'm not saying it's a bad sling container but not one of my normal sling containers that's why it's something a little bit different but definitely well ventilated at the time the spider was a little teeny tiny one probably about a half inch maybe three quarters of an inch max and i had a hard time actually finding it in here for a little while but as you can see there I don't have trouble finding it anymore. I don't know if that's showing up there, but there he or she is right in there. So this is a species that a lot of people will talk about the fact it's a dry species, but I have found with the Ceratogyrus species that they do appreciate some moisture. They will burrow down to find the moisture. So I think, unfortunately, it's one of those ones people read about that are an arid species, and I do think that's true to a point, especially when they're adults, it's not as necessary, but I have found the slings do like some moisture. So I did try to keep part of this moist at all times, but it's starting to, it's getting difficult to do and the spider's obviously too big for that. So we're gonna get it in this one here, which is one of the, I think they're around two quarts or so. I get them off Amazon, although I don't think they have them in stock right now. And what we have in here is in the back, there is probably eh, two and a half inches or so of substrate, about an inch in here. I will moisten this down a little bit so it can dig in. I have the cork bark hide and hopefully what happened is I made a little starter burrow. It'll go down there and start tuddling. Now ideally, and I'm going to call myself on this, there's another model of these that I use that's actually about an inch taller and I kind of wanted to put it into one of those but I don't have any more and they didn't have any on Amazon when I just looked so we're going to put it in this for the time being. So best case scenario, it's going to do some digging busy itself down in there it won't be on the surface too much but as you can see they do like the web so i'm guessing what's going to happen this is going to put on a little bit of size it's going to fill this up with webbing which is going to make it a little tricky to open the container so that's something you always want to keep in mind if you use you know a container it doesn't offer as much depth but i have had other species that web in ones like these and i've had no issues with them so what we're going to do here is try to pop this one open which i've never done before so i don't know how difficult it is it's very is it taped it's very difficult because it's taped. <laughs> All right, that, that will explain that. Oh, there's one over here too. Okay, we didn't know that. Let me get this out of here. This is the one, the Marshalli. We don't want to go ahead and put it in. And what I'm going to try to do, I really want to get footage of it. Now oh, this is going to be fun. If I can prod it. No, that didn't work very well. Alright, so what we'll try to do is pull the pull this out. Is it, whoop, whoop. I don't know if you can get a good shot of it there. And I think you can just kind of make out, you can see the little quote unquote horn starting to form right in there. And 
And I'm going to pull this whole thing out. And it's not going to work that well. Oh, this isn't, I, I'm, you see, I'm used to my setup, so that would be on cork bark. So I was expecting it all to come out with the cork bark, and that didn't work. get some footage of it there we go and I'm very gently tapping its backside I'm not like going to town there that sounds horrible <laughs> there's so many things that you say when rehousing these that just under different contexts if you can see it there There, he or she is. Hopefully it's a she. Now, I do know my Darlingis, I had one that matured male out at about this exact same size. But then the other one was a little bit bigger. So I'm hoping, I don't know if, you know, those of you that were raising before, feel free to chime in. If they are sexually dimorphic, I did not look it up before we did this video. But somebody that's had them before, feel free to chime in because that's always the best information is when you get it from somebody that actually has them. But uh, I would say this one is probably about two and a half inches or so now. You need to go in your new home. This is just, this is not working well. Go, go, go. Now if you want to get another little shot of it while it's out in the open. Gorgeous. Now, I was thinking about leaving this in there, but I know what's going to happen. It's going to web up, and it's going to go right to the, the top. So let me see if I can get a brush. You have to move a little bit. I need you to just go there. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. No, nope, not perfect. Don't even think about it. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the top on this. There we go. So, right in there. Gorgeous little spark. Good job. So, again, the as far as moisture requirements, I would keep for at least, while they're younger, at least a moist corner. See if they dig to them. I have found that when you moisten down the substrate, let it dry on the top, I have found that they will dig down to the moisture, which I assume is something they would probably do in the wild as well. But once they get older, things can dry out, but always supply that water dish. They, the water, the webbing is waterproof, so if you do have one that webs a lot, you can also dribble water on the webbing at night, and they will sometimes go off and drink off of that, which is kind of cool as well. As far as temperatures are concerned, in the summer months, it'll be a little warmer, probably 80 to 82 degrees in here. The winter months, I keep the temps right around 73. At my old house, it was even cooler during the summer and cooler during the winter months, and it did just fine. It's been growing fairly well overall. It's been a pretty good eater. And I've been feeding it as a little sling. I was feeding it little red runner nymphs. As it got a little older, I was feeding it medium red runners. And it's been doing just fine with that. And I actually dropped in a small cricket the other day. It ate that no problem. But obviously, anything you choose to feed it, whether it be mealworms, crickets, roaches, locusts, if you're overseas, we don't get those here, all of those would work well. So there we go. C. Marshali, horned baboon. Really keeping my fingers crossed that this is a female because I'm, you know, dying to raise one of the females up. I love my Darlingis. I have two female Darlingis that are just adorable. And again, for folks who are talking about the quote-unquote best beginner old world species, these guys are mentioned quite a bit with the Darlingis. And as you can see there, mine was fairly laid back overall. But I always got to mention that temperament can vary from spider to spider. So always keep that in mind just because somebody has a really calm spider or just because my spider is really calm doesn't mean that yours will necessarily behave the same way. So there we go. See Marshally, horned baboon in its new house. Can't wait to grow it up and hopefully it's a lady. 
All right, so just a heads up, the container that I used in the video, there were a couple things I want to point out. Number one, the spider was a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be when we rehoused it. So the container is probably a little on the small side. So I want to make sure everybody's clear because I know some folks out there were going to try to emulate me completely. And this is a situation that had I known how big the spider was, I probably would have used something a little bit larger. Also, I referenced in the video that they do make them a little deeper. So this probably would have been a little more practical because there's actually an extra inch of height in here, which would give you more more room for the spider to burrow, more room for substrate, more room for the webbing up top. I have a funny feeling I will be rehousing this one sooner than later because of the fact there isn't really a lot of room in that enclosure for it to grow. I'm guessing it will dig, it'll bring up some dirt, it'll start webbing, and in a few months after it molts, that thing will be a little bit cramped. Now, the only downside of that, it might mean an extra rehousing, which is totally okay. The spider will be fine, but for folks who want to avoid doing extra rehousings, just keep in mind that a spider that size you might want to put in something a little bit bigger. Even one of these small critter keeper size would be fantastic for it. I've used these for several of the baboon species before, including my Harpac Tira species and my OBT back in the day. So these are ones that work well with the baboon species. They offer a lot of room for digging, especially for the juveniles, and some room for that webbing. As you can see here, this is a Ceratogyrus darlingi, and she is doing just fine in it. So just a heads up on that. Again, want to call myself out there because I know some people will go look at this video and go, oh, I'm going to get that exact little enclosure, put that two or three inch spider in it and have to have another rehousing. So we want to avoid that extra stress. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up there. If you want to check out more videos before you subscribe, see what I'm about, you can find them over here. If you don't want to do either of those, totally understand. I'll be here if you need me. As always, love getting comments. Please feel free to comment. I will, if you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it may take me a little while because I tend to get a lot of them and it can take quite a while to go through them. That will do it for this one. As always, guys, stay safe, be kind, and we'll catch you all next time.